So if your glutamate levels are high and your dopamine levels are high and your serotonin levels are high, not only are you highly motivated and productive, but yeah, pretty high libido, which isn't the end of the world, right? Hide the wives. Vigor Steve here with chapter three of part two of the Optimized Entrepreneur Nootropics Deep Dive Video Series. Part two ended up being so long that I had to split it up into four different chapters. So in chapter one, we discussed the mood and relaxation neurotransmitters and neuromodulators in the form of endorphins, encephalins, endocannabinoids, anandamide, and gamma immunobutric acid, abbreviated to GABA. In chapter two, the previous part, we discussed motivation and productivity neurotransmitters and neuromodulators in the form of adenosine and acetylcholine. And in this video, chapter three, we're going to continue with the motivation and productivity neurotransmitters and discuss dopamine, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, glutamate, and histamine, because they all overlap to a certain extent, they regulate wakefulness and alertness and contribute to mood and motivation. So now we only have one more chapter to go, chapter four dropping next week, discussing serotonin and how to combine all of these over-the-counter supplements together in the entrepreneur neurotransmission stack. Subscribe now if you're not subscribed yet. And as always, I'll link all of the parts down below in case you want to wait and watch the entire part two in succession in probably a duration of one and a half hours, right? Stay tuned. Without further ado, let's get started with chapter three. Next on the list is dopamine, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with because everything on social media nowadays is highly dopaminergic. I mean, that's what the entirety of social media is designed around. Dopamine hits left and right. So if you want to have the utmost productivity throughout the day, I would advise you to omit social media before you do cognitive tasks because social media is literally depleting your dopamine levels. And even though you can do everything to upregulate dopamine levels with over-the-counter supplements and particular practices, it's probably not a good idea to do one before the other. So get all of your entrepreneurial aspirations out of the way before you even sign into social media. And then again, if you have all of your money making in place at the start of the day, if you want to look at some later in the day on Instagram or YouTube or wherever, go right ahead. You already have made your money for that day. So what is dopamine all about? It's a neurotransmitter in the brain associated with the reward system, motivation, and the reinforcement of behaviors. Dopamine contributes to mood regulation, motor control, and several cognitive functions, including attention and learning. Dopamine is synthesized from L-DOPA, which in turn is synthesized from L-tyrosine, which you can get from dietary sources, including animal meats, dairy products, nuts, seeds, legumes, and beans. So if you want your dopamine levels to be high, eat right. Dietary or supplemental L-tyrosine converts into L-DOPA through the tyrosine hydroxylase enzymes, and L-DOPA converts into dopamine through the ar aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase enzymes. Now downstream, dopamine can convert into norepinephrine through the dopamine beta hydroxylase enzymes, primarily in the noradrenergic neurons, and phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase converts norepinephrine into epinephrine, which primarily occurs in the adrenal medulla. So if you supplement with L-tyrosine, not only do you get increased dopamine levels, but also norepinephrine and epinephrine levels, which all seem to have a synergistic effect for attention, energy levels, and overall motivation. Dopamine is stored in the neurons where it's released into the synaptic cleft and can bind to the dopamine 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 receptors, which you can classify into dopamine receptor 1-like and dopamine receptor 2-like. Dopamine 1 and 5 are 1-like, and dopamine two, three, and four are two like. So I know it's a little bit confusing, depending on which receptors dopamine binds to and which other neuromodulators or other neurotransmitters are present, either promoting excitatory or inhibitory effects. This is the inhibitory or excitatory effects you can expect from dopamine. So symptoms of low dopamine includes depression, apathy, lack of motivation, fatigue, low energy, poor concentration, low libido, movement disorders, like Parkinson's disease. Now we're not going to go into the Parkinson's disease and the dopamine receptor agonists. That's a subject for a different video entirely. Symptoms of high dopamine levels are addiction, anxiety, agitation, paranoia, hallucinations, delusions, and impulsive or risk-taking behavior. So again, we're just trying to balance our dopamine levels for entrepreneurship. We don't want to become addicted. And if your dopamine levels are really that high, I mean, there's one place in the world where you can go to, actually two, uh, it's either Patty or Las Vegas. 
that really caters to highly dopaminergic activities. So basically, long story short, if you want to promote dopamine reuptake within the neurons, Las Vegas and Patia are the places to be. So what can we do to optimize our overall dopamine levels for our entrepreneurial goals? First thing we can look into is Macuna purines, which is uh, also known as velvet bean. It's a tropical legume native to Africa and Asia. And the seeds of Macuna purines contain L-dopa, which is the precursor for dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. General dosage recommendations are anywhere between 100 milligrams to 500 milligrams before cognitive tasks, up to three times per day. And the side effects of Macuna purines are high blood pressure, headaches, insomnia, thyroid issues, overstimulation and gastrointestinal discomfort. So a little bit of caution is advised. Um, I would start with the lower end and increase as needed, albeit that I believe the first one to say that L-tyrosine when it comes to dopamine synthesis is king, right? Even though L-tyrosine converts into L-dopa, I feel that L-tyrosine supplementation is superior to Macuna purines supplementation. Again, L-tyrosine is the precursor to dopamine, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Uh, which are the neurotransmitters associated with mood regulation and motivation. Foods rich in L-tyrosine includes, here we go, turkey, beef, chicken, pork, salmon, tuna, cheese, milk, egg whites, tofu, soybeans, nuts, seeds, legumes, beans, lentils, whole grains, and dark leafy vegetables. So if you want to be highly motivated, just eat right, bro. General recommendations for over-the-counter supplements containing L-tyrosine are anywhere between 500 milligrams to 2,500 milligrams before cognitive tasks. I prefer around 1,000 to 2,500 um, because for me, more L-tyrosine is better. Side effects include, right, if towards the higher end of L-tyrosine uh, intake over the day, uh, side effects include headaches, insomnia, thyroid issues, overstimulation, and gastrointestinal discomfort, which is very similar to a mucuna purines, which also includes high blood pressure. So. Um, again, I would go with L-tyrosine and otherwise there's L-phenylalanine, which converts into L-tyrosine within the liver after ingestion. L-phenylalanine is also found aplenty in dietary sources, which are very similar to the ones we already mentioned for L-tyrosine. So you get a double whammy. Uh, if you eat right, you get L-tyrosine plus L-phenylalanine, which ultimately converts into L-tyrosine, then converts into L-dopa and then contributes to high dopamine levels. General recommendations for L-phenylalanine are uh, anywhere between 500 to 2,500 milligrams before cognitive tasks, on top of whatever you're getting from your dietary sources. Again, side effects are very similar to Macuna purines or L-tyrosine, so uh, don't overdo the L-phenylalanine supplementation. And there's some overlap with monon, uh, monoamino oxidase inhibitors, so keep that in mind. Please do some research if you're using MAO inhibitors yourself. Then there's a vitamin B6, P5P, a vitamin B9 folate, iron, omega-3 fatty acids. Those all contribute with dopamine synthesis and dopamine release within the neurons. Um, we already mentioned those a little bit more in depth earlier on, so let's not waste too much time there. Again, eat healthy and supplement with a little bit of omega-3 fatty acids and perhaps vitamin B6, P5P before cognitive tasks when you take one of these neurotransmitter precursors so you can have the utmost conversion for neurotransmitter production downstream. Like I mentioned before, L-theanine has various relaxing, calming, and stress-reducing effects. L-theanine is known to influence neurotransmitters, including dopamine levels, and L-theanine might actually be a partial agonist of the dopamine 1-like and the dopamine 2-like receptors influencing overall dopaminergic neurotransmission. L-theanine is also structurally similar to the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate. It might actually bind to the glutamate NMDA receptors, uh, which might then indirectly influence uh, dopamine release and function as glutaminergic and dopaminergic systems in the brain are interconnected. So I think there's a lot to say for L-theanine, which I also highlighted earlier on in this video. And, and trust me, L-theanine will make a comeback a multitude of different times. Again, general recommendations for L-theanine are 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams upon waking and before bed, and perhaps a, a, an additional serving in the afternoon if desired. And here's uridine 5-monophosphate and ginkgo biloba extract yet again. Of course, uridine 5-monophosphate contributes to dopamine secretion and might influence serotonin neurotransmission, and ginkgo biloba extract increases acetylcholine levels and dopaminergic neurotransmission and might also influence a serotonin uptake, lowering its effect on positivity and overall well-being and also lowering adrenergic neurotransmission. So again, 
Um, I would rather go with uridine with 5 monophosphate over ginkgo biloba extract, but it, it's okay to combine both at a low dose and see how you respond. Besides these, polyphenol epigallocathetin gallate, um, also known as a green tea extract, has a neuroprotective and anti-inflammatory effect and is known to modulate dopamine levels as well. EGCG primarily raises dopamine levels by preventing its breakdown, its metabolism, by acting as a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So it is very similar or very overlapping effect with L-phenylalanine and St. John's wort. So again, a little bit of caution and further research is uh, advised when you start combining some of these over-the-counter supplements for dopaminergic or um, acetylcholine neurotransmission. And like L-theanine, EGCG might also have a direct impact on dopamine receptors in the brain. General recommendations are anywhere between 400 to 800 milligrams before cognitive tasks or upon waking to kind of get the day started because EGCG from green tea extract is pretty stimulatory and uh, I would avoid it before going to bed, obviously, because it will keep you awake. And it doesn't matter how much GABA or melatonin you supplement, um, there's going to be mixed signals and uh, prevent proper sleep quality. One is, that is very interesting to me and that I've used extensively over the last couple of years is saffron extract, which is widely uh, used as a, a culinary ingredient, as a coloring agent for particular dishes. Um, but it also has some uh, very potent antidepressing effects. Its bioactive compounds include crocin, saffronal, and picrocrocin, um, which are known to possess, again, antidepressant properties, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects, offering neuroprotection and even potential weight management, which is probably a, an indirect effect from its antidepressant properties. So these bioactive compounds are known to influence dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine levels in the brain. And I feel, again, besides the L-theanine, the saffron extract is a very complementary over-the-counter supplement you can add to the stack, not only to improve overall neurotransmission, but mostly to put you in a good mood. And again, like I alluded to earlier, a healthy brain that's nice and happy is a productive brain that's always motivated. I feel that 28 milligrams of saffron extract upon waking is more than enough, but feel free to supplement twice per day, 28 milligrams upon waking and before bed. And again, Bacopa Monieri is making a comeback again, uh, albeit that I feel that it's uh, you know inferior to some of the other over the supplements which I mentioned earlier for overall dopamine levels. Still something to look into. So long story short, what can we do to improve our overall dopamine levels? Eat healthy. All right, a, a good diet that's balanced contains plenty of L-tyrosine and L-phenylalanine. So, um, you know, I, I feel that dopamine levels should be nicely balanced throughout the day with a, a good diet that contains a lot of animal meat sources, maybe some dairy products and nuts, seeds and legumes. And then you can always supplement with L-tyrosine before cognitive tasks and combine that with uridine 5-monophosphate to take that to the next level. And then combine that also with vitamin B6, B5P for the conversion of L-tyrosine into L-dopa and uh, dopamine downstream. And then look into saffron extract as a great balancer on top of the L-theanine, which you take for acetylcholine levels and potentially a couple other neurotransmitters later on. Moving over to epinephrine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, noradrenaline, which contributes to the flight or flight response that is uh, in response to stress. So when these are released, they increase heart rates, elevate blood pressure, direct blood flow to skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, preparing the body for immediate action. Epinephrine additionally stimulates the release of glucose from liver glycogen stores and triglycerides and glycerol from adipose tissue, providing rapid energy increases. Now, uh, I know what you're thinking. What about epinephrine for fat loss? Yes, to a certain extent that will help, but that's why we have uh, ephedrine and caffeine and aspirin stacks or clenbuterol, right? Or EpiPens. Guys, uh, let's save that for a fat loss video. We're trying to focus on productivity here, okay? Um, there's no direct dietary sources for epinephrine and norepinephrine, but like I alluded to earlier, um, L-tyrosine, L-phenylalanine, converting into L-dopa, converting into dopamine, downstream can convert into norepinephrine and epinephrine. So again, if you want your fight or flight response to be balanced, eat a balanced diet for sake. Symptoms of low epinephrine and norepinephrine are uh, fatigue, low energy, depression, low blood pressure, poor stress response and reduced alertness, and high epinephrine and norepinephrine levels 
are uh, anxiety, nervousness, hypertension, increased heart rates, palpitations, restlessness, and insomnia. How can we optimize these levels? Well, funnily enough, uh, as part of the fight or flight response, epinephrine and norepinephrine are released following strenuous aerobic and resistance training. So not only does um, working out healthily in the morning and in the afternoon improve all of the other neurotransmitters, including endorphins, encephalins, endocannabinoids, and anandamides, it also helps with epinephrine and noradrenaline levels. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having those slightly elevated at certain points in the day to elicit a fight or flight response so your heart rate can go up and you work on your cardiovascular health. Right, again, you don't want them to be super duper high, but just high enough to get through the workout and elicit some sort of neurotransmitter response, also allowing your endorphin levels and endocannabinoid levels to be elevated post-workout, which can be highly, highly pleasurable. So besides strenuous workouts, right, uh, lift hard and heavy or go home and the side effects are gains. Well, this is not the end of the word, right? Uh, mucuna prurines of obviously contribute to aldopa, which can um, downstream contribute to dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine levels. We alluded this earlier. L-tyrosine is a building block for uh, these adrenal hormones. L-phenylalanine, also a building block. Vitamin B6, B5, P in the conversion. Iron, of course, caffeine is making a comeback by blocking the adenosine receptors, can lower the effects of adenosine, making you more alert and overlap with this increased epinephrine and norepinephrine that might be secreted during a strenuous aerobic or strenuous resistance training. And um, this enhances the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. And caffeine is also directly known to enhance and temporarily elevate epinephrine levels. Uh, Ginkgo biloba extract might have a overlap with uh, epinephric neurotransmission. And then there's saffron extract, which again can have a positive influence on dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine levels. In the brain. Now, I know what you're going to ask. Steve, what about the adoptogens which can help modulate norepinephrine and epinephrine levels, right? Rhodia rosea, ashwagandha root extract, Panax ginseng extract, Bacopa monieri extract, holy basil extract, ginkgo biloba extract, reishi mushroom extract, lion's mane extract, goto cola extract, cordyceps extract, cystench tuberosa extract, etc., etc., etc. Um, let's just save that for an adoptogens video. Let me know down below if you want to see a specific adoptogens video, even though I already went into the adoptogens for the optimized endurance deep dive video series. I think it was part two, but if you guys demand it, I don't mind making a separate video discussing all of the adoptogens that you can choose, not only for endurance, but overall productivity as well, right? The comment section is right there. Get busy. All right. So my uh, recommendations to optimize your epinephrine and norepinephrine levels would be as simple as going to the gym once or twice per day, right? Uh, daily fasted cardio in the morning and strenuous exercise later in the day after you've done all of your cognitive tasks. So you can get, can get a temporary fight or flight response, elicit a hypertrophy response, and then get a very high endorphin and very high endocannabinoid levels later on so you can relax. And then L-tyrosine, which obviously you're taking for dopamine, but thus you get sufficient amounts of norepinephrine and epinephrine levels through its metabolism. And then a saffron extract to kind of balance everything out. Moving over to glutamate, which is basically the crucial neurotransmitter for the central nervous system, primarily acting as an excitatory signal in the brain. Glutamate is the most abundant neurotransmitter in the brain. It's involved in learning, memory formation, and neuronal communication. It has some neuromodulatory effects because it's an excitatory neurotransmitter. Um, it plays a key role in facilitating the communication between nerve cells. Glutamate interacts with the N-methyl D aspartate receptors, so that's the NMDA receptors, involving a synaptic plasticity and learning. Now, glutamate interacts with the dopamine and serotonin, which, uh, of course, are um, involved in uh, motivation, sexual desire, and arousal as well. So if your glutamate levels are high and your dopamine levels are high and your serotonin levels are high, not only are you highly motivated and productive, um, but yeah, pretty high libido, which isn't the end of the world, right? So this intricate balance between glutamate, dopamine, and serotonin um, and GABA, which is the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter, 
is uh, very important when it comes to sexual behavior. And then uh, obviously when you combine that with a little bit of exogenous oxytocin, hide the wives. All right, glutamate is synthesized from dietary glutamine, which can easily be acquired from meat, poultry, fish, dairy products, eggs, legumes, nuts, seeds, whole grains and vegetables, more on that later. But dietary sources of glutamine and glutamate are not comparable to the synthetic form of glutamate, monosodium glutamate, right? MSG, which is commonly found in a lot of Asian dishes. Now, you might expect monosodium glutamate to be as excitatory as regular glutamate, and to a certain extent it does, People do get excited when they have a little bit of MSG with their diets, but most of these um, culinary dishes also contain a boatload of sugar. I've been living in Asia for close to 17 years, and I can tell you that it's probably best to avoid street food here because it contains all of the sugars and all of the MSG and all of the cooking oil, and uh, that might be highly excitatory, but also not good for your health. Like, allegedly, MSG is not the best for your health. Um, so if you want to increase your glutamate levels, just look into your diet, please. It contains plenty of glutamine, which is good for intestinal health as well. Symptoms of low glutamate levels include impaired memory and cognitive function, and excessive glutamate levels can cause neurodegenerative diseases, migraines, anxiety, and even seizures. So don't overdo the MSG, just stick with dietary glutamine, which of course is the precursor to glutamate, um, and is found in foods including beef, chicken, turkey, <laughs> egg whites, pork, salmon, tuna, cod, milk, yogurt, cheese, beans, lentils, almonds, walnuts, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, cabbage, spinach, parsley, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, oats, barley, wheat germ, tofu, and tempeh. I mean, if you can't uh, get some glutamate from those dietary sources, then I don't know what will, but feel free to supplement with a little bit of glutamine because, again, it's very good for intestinal health. 10 uh, 10 grams to 20 grams upon waking, and perhaps again, pre or post workout, depending on what you prefer. I would do a 10 grams in the morning before fasted cardio, and anywhere between 10 to 20 grams pre workouts, depending on my overall intensity during that workout session. So that could be anywhere between 20 grams up to 40 grams per day. And acetylcysteine, the precursor for glutathione, uh, contributes to the cysteine glutamate exchange system and might indirectly influence glutamate neurotransmission. Now, most of us would uh, just generally take a thousand milligrams N-acetylcysteine in the morning and in the evening for overall health, right, glutathione levels, and also supporting the cysteine and glutamate exchange system. And by acting as a precursor for the antioxidant glutathione, this enhances the cell's ability to manage oxidative stress and maintain glutamate balance. So it might be an indirectly contributing to glutamate neurotransmission, but I feel that N-acetylcysteine is just a very good general health over-the-counter supplement that everybody should take. Magnesium is involved in the regulation of NMDA receptors and iron is involved in the synthesis of glutamate from glutamine. Long story short, eat healthy, take your glutamine supplements around the workouts and shut the f*** up. Moving over to histamine, which I just want to discuss briefly. However, histamine is a key wake-promoting neurotransmitter that is involved in inflammation, gastric acid secretion has effects on other neurotransmitters and plays a key role in the immune response. Histamine is produced and released by the mast cells and basophils of the body. And even though histamine is a very essential part of the body's defense mechanism, very low levels or very high levels can cause all kinds of symptoms. So it's very important to just have balanced histamine levels. Again, histamine is involved in the regulation of wakefulness and alertness by acting on the histamine H1 and H3 receptors. And this is why some antihistamine medications, which would otherwise inhibit the effects of high histamine levels, uh, by blocking the H1 receptors, histamine H1 receptors, can cause drowsiness and sleepiness. So you definitely don't want to block those. And it's the histamine H3 receptors that provide inhibitory feedback for histamine producing neurons and thus reduce further release of histamine, indirectly promoting wakefulness. So please be mindful of your histamine H1 and H3 receptors. Um, symptoms of low histamine levels is uh, poor alertness and focus. Symptoms of high histamine levels are allergic reactions, hives, itching and flushing. And excessive histamine symptoms include basically histamine intolerance besides the symptoms of high histamine levels, uh, headaches and migraines, nasal congestion, overall fatigue, digestive issues, and even irregular periods. So again, we're just trying to balance the histamine levels for overall entrepreneurial goals. We can do that by uh, focusing on our diet, 
because histamine is produced from histidine, which is an essential amino acid found in dietary sources, including sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, soy sauce, miso, parmesan, cheddar, gouda, bacon, salami, pepperoni, tuna, mackerel, sardine, shrimp, lobster, crab, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, tomatoes, eggplants, spinach, strawberries, bananas, and citrus fruits. And the following foods are also able to trigger histamine release in the body. Red wine, beer, pineapple, papaya, kiwi, avocados, eggplant, tomatoes, as well as some fish, food additives, and preservatives. So again, if you don't want symptoms of excessive histamine levels to the point you need an antihistamine making you drowsy, um, pick your foods carefully. I would omit something like uh, Parmesan, cheddar, gouda, bacon, salami, or pepperoni, because those are technically processed foods, right? And you can get all of the uh, neurotransmitter precursors from uh, basically animal meat sources. So you have to skip, you can skip the cheeses. And then um, condiments like ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise um, might have uh, additives or preservatives contributing to high histamine levels as well. So uh, pick your foods carefully so you have a balanced histamine level so you can promote wakefulness and alertness, but not to the point you get histamine intolerance. Uh, so basically eat healthy and a balanced diet. And then vitamin B6 uh, contributes to the synthesis of histamine and copper is a cofactor in the enzyme D-amine oxidase, which breaks down histamine. So if you have symptoms of high histamine um, causing you to result to antihistamines, maybe you're copper deficient and you need to upregulate the breakdown of histamine by um, providing uh, adequate copper levels from dietary sources or through a general uh, over-the-counter multivitamin formula for normal diamine oxidase levels so you can have balanced histamine levels. And also keep in mind that zinc actually inhibits diamine oxidase and might lead to increased histamine levels. So if you eat a balanced diet and you take a general over-the-counter uh, multivitamin formula and maybe supplement with a little bit of zinc, I think your histamine levels will be balanced to the point you're wakeful and uh, productive, but not to the point you have to result to antihistamines because your histamine levels are so high, because your dietary food sources and choices are so poor, uh, because you focus on the bacon and the ketchup, right? Once per week is fine, but then every day, okay? All right, let's wrap it up here. Next week will be the final chapter, chapter four, continuing with the motivation and productivity neurotransmitters and neuromodulators in the form of serotonin. We'll go really in depth. I really want to spend a good amount of time on serotonin because I still firmly believe that a happy brain is a very motivated and productive brain. And then after serotonin, we'll start stacking all of these over-the-counter supplements for neurotransmission together in the form of the entrepreneur neurotransmission and neuromodulator stack. In case you don't want to wait, all of the links with discount codes for all of the over-the-counter supplements we're discussing in this uh, four chapters is down below, right? You can preemptively buy some of them. And then in part four, dropping next week, I'll teach you guys how to stack all of this together for the utmost highest level of mood and productivity. Stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front of a for you guys. One more week and then everything will start to make sense. I promise you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.